Hi everyone, this is Rosie, and today we'll be sewing the Essential Card Clutch. So, let's get started. Let's take a quick look at the card clutch. It measures approximately 8 inches wide by 5 inches high, and it uses some snap closures. I've used some magnetic snaps here, but you can use cam snaps or whatever other type of closure that you like. It has six card slots. There are three down here on the bottom row and three here on the top row. So this is the bottom row and here is the top row. Then it has a zipper compartment here where you can store your cash. The pocket does not go all the way down to the bottom of the clutch, so it's just deep enough to hold your cash. And then there's a slip pocket back here that will easily hold my iPhone 12. So that's basically it, and it's a fairly quick sew. Let's go ahead now and start making our clutch. First, let's take a quick look at the materials needed to make the clutch. For this one here, I chose to use the same fabric for both the exterior and the lining. And this clutch needs one half of a yard of fabric and you will have some fabric left over. Then on this clutch, I chose to use a contrasting fabric for my lining. For this clutch, you need one half of a yard of fabric for the exterior and a fat quarter of fabric for your lining. And again, you will have some leftover fabric. For the clutch I'm making today, I'm using this fabric here for my exterior and it is a blend of cotton and flax and I will be using this for the exterior including the wristlet strap. These fabrics here will be used for my lining and again the fabric is made from 100% cotton plus flax. I'm using Pellon SF 101 for my woven interfacings and then I'm going to use a piece of Decoville Light for the interfacing on the exterior front. Then you'll need a number three zipper. Mine is much longer than it needs to be. You actually only need a nine inch zipper. You will need a three quarter inch D-ring with a swivel clip and two sets of snaps. I am using an 18 millimeter magnetic snap you can also use cam snaps. And for my thread, I'm just using a general all-purpose sewing thread. Now, if you'd like to sew along with me, I will put a link to the pattern in the description below the video. Our first step will be to interface all of our fabric pieces. So you want to take the exterior piece A, place it wrong side up, and then you're going to take your woven interfacing, which is piece C, and place it onto the wrong side of piece A and you want to fuse it down according to the manufacturer's instructions, but you want to make sure that you have even spacing all the way around that interfacing. And then you'll do the same thing with your lining piece A. Place it wrong side up, and then you'll take your piece C woven interfacing, and then you'll interface that piece onto your lining. Next, take pattern piece B, and again, you want to place it so that the wrong side is facing up. And then you're going to interface that with pattern piece D, which is your woven interfacing. You want the top long edges here to be even with each other. And then you want even spacing all the way around the interfacing. Then take the piece that you cut out for your card slot, place it wrong side up, and you'll take your woven interfacing and place it on the wrong side of the card slots. You want this edge right here to be even, so the edge of the interfacing should be even with the edge of the card slots, and then you'll fuse those pieces together. I'm going to go fuse all of mine off camera. I have all my pieces interfaced with the Pellon SF-101, and now I want to take exterior piece A, place it wrong side up, and I'm going to take the Decoville, which is PC, and I want to interface that right on top of the Pellon SF-101. So you just place it directly on top, and then you'll fuse these together according to the manufacturer's instructions. Now, I've planned this so that all of your interfacings 
will have enough space to accommodate your seam allowance without the interfacings getting in the way of your seam allowance. And I'll go ahead and fuse that off camera. In this step, we will be creating our card slots. And in your PDF file, you do have a little worksheet to help you do that. First thing that we want to do is draw some lines that are parallel to the top of the panel. And the top of my panel is right along this edge here. And you want to make all of your measurements down from that top edge. Now I did make a mistake, and yes, I do make mistakes all the time. I have a line drawn here that I crossed out. Just ignore that line. That is not a measurement that we need. So the first thing that you want to do is draw a line that's four inches down from the top and parallel to the top. The second line that you draw will be 9.5 inches down from the top, then another one 10 inches down from the top, and lastly, you need to draw a line 15.5 inches down from the top. After marking your lines, you're going to take the panel and you want to fold back on this four inch line with the right sides of the card slots together. So go ahead, fold right on that line. You want to make sure that your side edges are all nice and even with each other. Once you have it folded and it's looking good, you can go ahead and press a crease into that fold. Next, you want to fold back on the line that you drew 10 inches from the top. And that's right here for me. So I'm going to fold back. And again, you want to make sure that all those side edges are nice and even with each other. And then you can go ahead and press. Now we're going to work with that 4 inch line again. You want to take the 4 inch line and you want to take that fold and bring it up to the 9.5 inch line right here. You want that fold to be sitting right on the 9.5 inch line. Making sure that your side edges are even. And you, then you're going to go ahead and press. And you can press from underneath here too a little bit. Then you'll take the 10 inch line and that's going to get folded up to the 15.5 inch line. So here's the 10 inch line. Fold it up to the 15.5 inch line. Side edges need to be even. And then go ahead and press. Take your card slot panel and open it up with the wrong side facing up. This is the top of the panel because this is where the 4 inch mark is and here's the bottom where the 15.5 inch mark is. Take your card slot template. You want to place it right on the bottom of those card slots. Make sure that the bottom and side edges are all even and then you'll take an erasable marking tool. I am using a friction pen. Be very careful if you use one of these on your projects because while the marks will disappear with heat, they can come back with cold. So I've just marked the placement for the snaps. And then I'm going to take a piece of Decoville Light, just a scrap, and place it over those marks and fuse my Decoville Light into place. Now you'll take the card slot panel and turn it over so that the right side is facing up. And you'll take the card slot template once again and we're going to make some marks on the right side of the fabric. So again, line it up at the bottom of the card slot panel. Make sure that all of those edges are nice and even. And the first thing that we're going to do is mark our curves. So just draw them in. And then once again, you want to mark the placement for the snaps. Next, take the panel and you want to fold it. 
just like this, and your panel should be measuring five and one quarter inches from the bottom to the top. Next thing that you want to do is take the card slot template once again, line it up on top of the card slots. This time we want to be up from the bottom, but we want our side edges to be even. And then you want to mark where these dashed lines are. So I'm marking right onto the exterior where those dashed lines are. And then I'm going to do it one more time up here towards the top. Make sure that your side edges are even and mark the location of the dashed lines. And then the last thing that we want to do is connect the marks for those lines. So just line up your ruler where you made the marks and draw your lines. Now you're going to stop right where this top fold is. It doesn't need to go any farther than that, but if it does, it's no big deal, assuming you're using an erasable marker. So go ahead and mark all four of your lines. Before I do any sewing, I want to install the male part of the rivets onto my card slot. Now you may not be using rivets, you may be using cam snaps or a different type of snap. Whatever you're using, you want to go ahead and install your closures now. So I'll just punch a hole where I mark the placement. And I'll place the rivet in there and put on the end caps. And then I'm going to install these with my rivet press. Now that I have those installed, we can go ahead and top stitch along the folds of the card slots and then we're going to stitch down on each one of the lines that we drew. I will be sewing on a Juki DX4000 QVP, which is also known as the Kokochi. I'm going to start by stitching the two folds of the card slots and I will be using a stitch length of 3.0 and I'll top stitch approximately an eighth of an inch away from each fold. You do want to back stitch at both ends. Then I'll go ahead and top stitch on that second fold. Next I'm going to stitch down on each one of these lines and I will still be using a stitch length of 3.0. You just want to sew right on top of those lines. Try to be as accurate as you can. And where each one of these folds is, you want to back stitch really well. So I like to go over it a few times. And then I'll do the same thing at the second fold here. And then when you get to the bottom, you want to back stitch. Then you're going to 
sew down each one of those lines exactly the same way. I just finished stitching down all those lines and the last thing that I want to do here is baste the side edges together. I'll just baste about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. I finished the stitching and I verified once again that my piece measures five and one quarter inches from the top to the bottom. And the last thing that I want to do is cut out these curved edges. Now we can prepare our zipper. As I said before, mine is much longer than it needs to be. But the first thing that you want to do is cut off this bottom zipper stop right here. Next, you'll take the piece that you cut out for your zipper tab. You want to place that right at the end of the zipper with the right sides together. So the right side of the tab against the right side of the zipper and then you'll go ahead and clip it in place. You're going to sew the tab to the end of the zipper with a seam allowance of one half of an inch and a stitch length of 3.0. Back stitch at both ends and I'm going to do that off camera. After sewing the tab onto the zipper, let's pull the tab away from the zipper, turn the zipper over to the wrong side, and you want to take the top end of that zipper tab, fold it down about that much, it's about a quarter of an inch, and then fold it again over the end of the zipper. And then you're going to hold it in place with a clip. Now we're not going to do any top stitching on the right side of the zipper tab at this point. Next thing that I want to do is measure seven and a half inches up from the bottom of the tab. So I'll take my ruler and just measure seven and a half inches from the bottom, I'm going to mark a line all the way across the zipper, just like that. Then I'm going to open the zipper and I want it to be past those lines. Next thing that we want to do is fold back the zipper where we made the marks. So fold back the zipper you want to fold right on that mark and place the zipper so that it's wrong sides together. Then you want to take the zipper teeth on this end right here and you want to bring that mark up to the zipper teeth and you'll be placing it at a 45 degree angle to your zipper teeth. Then you can hold it in place with a pin for now. Then you'll do the same exact thing to the other side. Fold back on the line so that the wrong sides of the zipper are together. Then you'll bring the end of the zipper up to where that line is so that it's sitting right underneath the zipper teeth. Just like this. And then you'll put a pin in to hold it in place. Now you want to go ahead and secure the ends of the zipper together with some stitching. You can either use some hand stitching here or you can go ahead if you're confident enough and do it by machine. One thing that I like to do before I stitch everything in place is just close this up and you want the two ends of the zipper 
to be even with each other. So when the zipper is closed, both ends of the zipper should be at the same height. I am going to secure the ends of the zippers with some machine stitching and I will do that off camera. I have the zipper tacked into place and I want to trim these ends off but I don't want to trim it even with the zipper tape yet so I'm just going to leave a little bit of overhang there on each side. And again your zipper tab should only be folded over at this point right now and you want the fold there to be covering your line of stitching and that's as much as you want to do with the zipper tab right now. In this step we'll be sewing the zipper to the card slot pocket. So I like to take a piece of double-sided adhesive tape that's one-eighth of an inch in width and I'm going to place it down on the right side of the pocket but I want to make sure that my tape is within a half of an inch of each side edge there. So just go ahead and place that down and then you want to remove the release paper to expose the adhesive. Now you do want to mark the center of the card slot panel, which I've done here. All I did was fold it in half and mark the center. You also want to mark the center of your zipper on the wrong side of the zipper. Now you're going to take your zipper and place it on top of the card slot panel with the right side of the zipper against the right side of the card slot panel. and you want to have the same distance from each end, you should have approximately 5 eighths of an inch on each side edge. Next, take one of your pocket lining pieces. You want to place it right sides together with the card slots and with the zipper sandwiched in between. You want to make sure that those side edges are even and you want the top edges to be even as well. And now that we have that clipped together, we're going to sew straight across with a one quarter of an inch seam. I'm sewing with a one quarter of an inch seam allowance and a stitch length of 3.0 and I will back stitch at both ends. My zipper pull is right here. So I'm going to stop and move that out of the way. And now I can finish sewing across. Now I can go ahead and remove the remaining tail on this side of the zipper. I'm just going to trim it even with the edge of the seam there. And then I want to flip the lining so that the wrong side of the lining is facing the wrong side of the card slots. And I'm just going to put a couple of clips in to hold everything in place. We're not doing any pressing at this point yet. We just want to keep that lining out of the way. Then we're going to take piece B and sew it to the opposite side of the zipper here. Again, you want to find the center of that piece and then you'll take a piece of double-sided adhesive tape and place it right up at the edge there, making sure to keep that tape out of the seam allowance. So you want the tape to stop one half of an inch away from each edge. Then you'll remove the release paper to expose the adhesive. And now that we have that done, we can take our zipper and place it right at the top edge of piece B, matching up the centers. And when you do this, you want to make sure that the side edges of the card slot panel and piece B are even with each other. Take your second pocket lining piece and we want to clip the right side of the pocket lining 
to the wrong side of the zipper. And your piece B is right here, so your pocket lining is essentially getting clipped to piece B with the zipper in between. You want to make sure that those edges are even. After you have everything clipped together, you're going to stitch one quarter of an inch away from the edge with a stitch length of 3.0 and you'll do this exactly the way you did for the other side of the zipper. And I am going to do that off camera. Now you can go ahead and trim off the other zipper tail right here. And what you should have now are these two pocket pieces. and the card slot panel and your piece B. So here's what it looks like from this side and here's what it looks like from the card slot side. Now is when you want to go ahead and press everything really well. Just going to press away from the zipper on both sides. When you're done pressing, we're going to top stitch one eighth of an inch away from the edge of the zipper seam. Then you'll pivot, you'll top stitch one eighth of an inch away from the edge of the zipper tab, and it's this edge right here. Then we'll pivot again and top stitch one eighth of an inch away from the edge of the zipper on the other side. I'm ready to top stitch. I will be top stitching one eighth of an inch away from the edge with a stitch length of 3.4, and you do want to back stitch. Then you can pivot and top stitch across that zipper tab. Then you'll pivot again and top stitch across the other side of the zipper. And back stitch. I finished top stitching all around the edge of the zipper. Now you may notice that I have a green zipper here instead of the orange one. The reason why is because I needed to refilm this particular clip, so I needed to remake this entire unit to show you the next step. But after this step, we'll go back to the orange zipper. You want to take this and turn it over, and you want to bring your two pocket lining pieces, and you're going to clip them right sides together along this long edge right here. After you have that clipped together, we're going to sew straight across this long edge, one quarter of an inch away from the edge with a stitch length of about 2.4. You do want to back stitch at both ends. There's no need to sew up the sides at this point. You're just sewing along this straight edge. And I am going to do that off camera. After sewing the bottom edge of the pocket lining pieces together, you're going to bring piece B and the card slot panel together with the pocket panel sandwiched in between. You want to line up your top edges here just like this and clip them together. Do that on both sides. And then you want to clip everything together around these three sides here. After clipping, just turn it over, make sure that everything looks good, all your edges are nice and even. 
And then you just want to baste all the sections together one eighth of an inch away from the edge around these three sides. I will do that with a stitch length of 3.0 and I will do it off camera. In this step, we're going to prepare our wristlet strap and our D-ring tab. So I will start with the wristlet strap, place it so that the wrong side is facing up, and then you want to bring the two long raw edges together. The wrong sides of the fabric will be together. And then you just want to press a crease in the fold. And you'll open it up. And you want to bring the two long edges right into the middle here. And then again, go ahead and press a crease into that fold. You'll do this on both sides. We'll flip it over and same thing just press that right into the middle there then you'll take the two folded edges bring those together and once again press Then for the D-ring tab, you'll basically do the same thing. You want to place it wrong sides up and along the three inch side here, you're going to fold it in half, press, and then bring the two edges right into the middle and press. Do the same thing on the other side. and then fold the whole thing together with the folded edges together and press. Now for the wristlet strap you're going to open it up and bring the two ends right sides together just like this and we're going to sew those ends together but before you sew them together you want to take your swivel clip and place it onto the wristlet strap and then again you're going to open them up. You want to make sure that nothing is twisted here. Bring the ends right sides together. Clip them in place and after you clip them you're going to sew straight across with a one quarter inch seam and I'm going to do that off camera. After sewing that seam go ahead and press it open and then you want to fold everything back into place. You bring the folded edges together once again and clip them together. You'll do this all the way around the wristlet. After clipping the wristlet together, we're going to top stitch one eighth of an inch away from each edge. I like to start right here where the seam is and you also want to have the swivel clip above your starting point so that that clip is not getting in your way as you sew. And then we also want to top stitch one eighth of an inch away from each edge of the D-ring tab. I'm sewing one eighth of an inch away from the edge of the wristlet and I'm starting on the double fold side here and I will back stitch. I'm using a stitch length of 3.4. Now that I'm back to where I started, I'll go over that previous line of stitching where I began and then I'll just back stitch. Then you can flip over to the other side and you're going to stitch the other side in exactly the same way, one eighth of an inch away from the edge. And again, I'm starting where the seam is.
and back stitch. Then I like to move my swivel clip about an inch below where that seam line is and I'm going to sew the two sides of the strap together right along that seam line. And I like to start by just dropping the needle down in there first and you want to sew across this a few times. And then if you want, you can finish it off with a little rivet right there. Now you'll take your D-ring tab and once again, you want to top stitch one eighth of an inch away from each of those edges. Then you want to take the D-ring and slip it onto the end of the tab. Bring those two raw edges together and baste across. And I'm just basting one eighth of an inch away from the edge. Next, take your card slot pocket and you want to place the D-ring tab right above that top card slot and then we're just going to baste it in place about one eighth of an inch away from the edge. In this step we're going to be sewing the card slot pocket to exterior piece A. First I want to show you that on the wrong side of piece A, I've gone ahead and marked in my one half inch seam allowance all the way around the perimeter of piece A. All of my interfacings are not interfering with that seam line and that is to reduce bulk. Also, the way that we've sewed in our zipper here is also meant to reduce bulk in the seam line. Now we're going to turn piece A over so that it's right side up. And you're going to take the card slot pocket and you want the card slots facing the right side of piece A. And you're going to line up all of your edges here. You want the side edge and the bottom edge to be even and then you're going to clip it in place. After everything is clipped into place you want to make sure that you have equal distance between the top of the card slot pocket and the top of piece A. Then you can turn it over and check from the other side and make sure that all of your edges are even. Now, this is how we're going to sew this together. Right here, I've drawn a line one half inch up from the bottom of the card slot pocket. My line begins and ends right after the curve here, and it's about six and a half inches long. We're going to sew straight across that line, and we're only going to sew on that line. You want to backstitch at both ends. Then when we're done sewing that into place, we're going to baste each side edge one eighth of an inch away from the edge. I'm going to start by sewing on that half inch seam line and I'm using a stitch length of 3.0 and I will backstitch. Try and stay on that line the best you can. Now I'm going to go over here and I'm just going to baste one eighth of an inch away from the edge here.
and then I'll do the same exact thing on the other side. Now we want to take lining piece A and place it right sides together against exterior piece A. You want to line up all of your edges, make sure that everything is nice and even, and your card slot pocket is going to be sandwiched in between both your exterior and interior lining pieces. So you're going to go ahead and clip everything together all the way around. After it's clipped over, you're going to flip it over to the other side, make sure that all of your edges are nice and even, and now we're going to start sewing. Where we sewed this stitching line down here, this was the half inch up from the bottom edge of the card slot pocket, you want to drop your needle right down where that line of stitching ends and then you're going to start sewing around. You will back stitch and then you're going to sew all the way around until you get to the other side where you began the stitching and then you're going to stop right there and back stitch. I'm about to start sewing and I have an open toe foot attached because I'm hoping that's going to be able to help you see where I'm sewing a little bit easier. But in actuality you want to be using a zipper foot for doing this. So we'll start with the open toe and see how we do with it. But you can see right here I've dropped my needle right down on the end of that stitching line where we sewed one half inch up from the bottom of the card slot pocket. I'm going to be using a stitch length of 3.0 and my seam allowance is one half of an inch and I'm just going to be following right along where I drew in my seam allowance. So, let's start with a back stitch. And I'm just going to follow along that line. I should be okay until I get to the point where my zipper is and then I might run into a little bit of trouble because of the width of the open toe foot, but we'll give it a try. This does give you a better view. Now you do have some bulk here, even though we've reduced a lot of the bulk out of the project, there is still some bulk in here. So you want to be careful. You want to make sure that that D-ring is out of the way. I think mine is not, so I'm just going to flip it back out of the way and I'll continue sewing. Now you should be able to feel where the top of your card slot pocket is. When you get there, just back stitch over that area just a little bit. Go slow around your curves. Now I'm coming up to where my zipper tab is. That's where I might run into some trouble with this foot. So I'll just go slow. I'm going to back stitch over that area a little bit. A hump jumper would definitely help here. Okay. Now I'm just going to sew around until I get to this point right here 
which is the beginning of that stitching line. Okay, and then I'll back stitch. And we're done. Go ahead and check all of your seams. Make sure that everything looks good. You should have an opening right here, and that's where we're going to be turning the clutch right side out. So now what we want to do is press all of these seams open. So just go around and give everything a really good pressing. We will be trimming these seams a little bit shorter when we're done with the pressing, but for right now I just want you to iron everything open. And you're only going to be pressing from the lining side. I finished pressing open the seam on the lining side. Right here at the bottom of the lining where you have that opening, you just want to press back by that one half inch seam allowance. Now, you have two options here. We're going to trim down the seams. I prefer to use a pair of pinking shears just to trim around the top seam. So anything that's above where the card slot pocket is, I can trim with my pinking shears. If you don't have pinking shears or don't want to use pinking shears, you can trim the seam down to about a quarter of an inch and where the curves are, you're just going to make some small clips into the seam there and make sure that you don't clip through your seam allowance. So I will just go ahead and start by making a few short clips right here so that I can get my pinking shears in there. And then I'm just going to trim around the top end of the clutch with the pinking shears. I finished trimming with my pinking shears on the upper portion of the clutch. Now I want to trim down the seam allowance on the lower portion where the card slot pocket is. And I'm going to trim the seam down to one quarter of an inch. But this part that I'm about to say is really important. You do not want to trim at all the area where your opening is. You're going to leave that at the full one half inch seam allowance. So I'm just going to make some marks one right here and one right here and in between those marks I am not going to do any trimming. So I'm just going to take my scissors and make a small clip where I have that first mark and then I'm just going to trim that seam allowance down to approximately one quarter of an inch. And in this area right here where the curve is, you can make a few small clips in towards your line of stitching, being very careful not to cut into that stitching. You're just clipping around the curve. And then you'll go ahead and do the same exact thing on the other side here. Just make a small clip, and then you can go ahead and trim it down to one quarter of an inch. And then you can also go ahead and make a few clips in towards your stitching line around the curve. Now we're ready to turn the clutch right side out. So you're going to reach in here. You want to be very careful um, where your stitching line ends on both sides of the opening here because there's a lot of stress at that point. But stick your hand all the way in and grab one of the corners and just start to pull. And then you can push. And 
and just pull until everything is right side out. Now, when you do this, it's going to look like your card slot is backwards, but it's really not. We're going to take care of that in a few minutes. So what I want you to do now is just push everything out, push out all of those seams, try and get everything to look nice and curve there where the curves are. You want your you want your seam to be laying right at the top and we're going to go around the piece and give everything a really good pressing right now. Now go ahead and press everything really well. Definitely want to use steam here. Now, where your opening is, you need to fold this under. That's on the exterior side. You're going to steam it in place. And you'll turn it over, and from the lining side, same thing. You're going to turn under by a half of an inch and steam it in place. Then you're going to take needle and thread and the best way to do this is really to hand sew it closed and you're just going to stitch the lining to the exterior right across that opening. And I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera. My opening is stitched closed so now we're going to take the card slot panel, the card slot pocket here, and we're going to flip it over to the other side. And just get in there and push out all of those rounded corners. And now your card slots are right where they should be. And then you're going to go around the entire piece and press really well. And it really helps to use a lot of steam here when you do this. Make sure everything looks good all around and then you can go ahead and start pressing. So I like to steam and hold. If you have a wooden clapper, that's something that really helps. What you would do is you would give it steam and then you would press it down with the wooden clapper and that actually compresses all of the fibers and helps everything to lay nice and flat and it eliminates a lot of that bulk that's in there. The last thing that we need to do is install the other side of the snaps. I've already marked my snap placement, but I want to show you how I did it. On the snaps here, on the male snaps, I just colored in right on top of the snap, and then I closed the top, making sure that everything is nice and even there, even spacing, and then I just pressed, and then it gave me my marks for the location of the snap placement. So now I'll go ahead and punch out some holes where my marks are. There is Decoville light inside this flap, so we didn't have to add anything there as we did for the bottom half of the snap. Now I'll go ahead and install the snaps. And then I'll go ahead and secure them in place with my rivet press.
and here is our clutch all completed. All we need to do is attach our strap. And now you're good to go. Well, I do hope that you have enjoyed watching this tutorial. I would love to see the ones that you make. You can post them over in my Facebook group, which is Rosie and David Patterns. I also want to thank everybody who has liked my videos and subscribed to my channel. If you're not already a subscriber, I really would love to have you as one. So please like and subscribe.